What's up, doers? It's your boy Happy Chappy here. And on this episode, we are going to do another top five Minecraft early game farms. Okay, these are five things that you can build pretty early in the game. Now, I don't mean within the first day. Okay, people are flaming me in the other video because I have, where are they, observers here in some of my farms. But I mean, come on, you should be able to mine nine or ten pieces of obsidian pretty early on in the game and get to the nether could you just smash and grab some quartz stone and then get the out of dodge okay so salty okay so the first farm on this list is going to be we will do the melon farm so for the melon farm all you're going to need is six pieces of glass an observer a piston a single piece of builder block a single piece of redstone dust as well as two hoppers two chests some melon seeds and your diamond hoe. I'm gonna bring along some grass blocks with me because I, yeah. Okay, so for this build, the only thing you need to do is carve out a little area here where you are going to plant your melon seeds, plant those down so that way they can start growing. And then behind the melon seeds, what you're gonna do is place down an observer so the dot is at the back. Then you're going to place a block with a piece of redstone dust, a piston, and then on the sides here you're going to do three pieces of glass on each side okay this is what everything should look like there when you are done this is a very simple build and then all you have to do is come to the front here and dig these out these four blocks here out and then you can place down your chest with your two hoppers going into it okay and as you can see here if we turn up the random tick speed with the random tick speed turned up as soon as the melon grows here the observer recognizes the signal from it and the melons pop and get put into the chest here. If this ever happens, all you have to do is just build the walls up one extra height. So we can take our glass here and do that and then you will be safe and um, ready to continue on. If you want to, you can put these things side by side by side all the way down if you want to to continue on and make one of the most epic melon farms on the Minecraft planet. Okay, next up on the list is going to be the concrete generator. Now, concrete is a pretty simple thing to build. All you need is some sand and gravel. Those are pretty readily available everywhere you look around, wherever you can find a water source, okay? Or you can even find entire gravel mountains out in Minecraft, which is pretty insane. So, the items that you're going to need for this build are very simple. You're going to need 12 glass, one piece of obsidian, one piece of water, two hoppers, and a single chest. I lied for this build you're gonna need 16 glass okay so whatever okay so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna place down three pillars like this all in a little pattern now did I not turn down the random oh my goodness okay then what you're gonna do is on this top block here you're gonna put on two blocks just like that with a piece of obsidian on the backside in the center there and then a two high wall like that on the side Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna dig out this block here, doesn't matter if it's one or two. And then in the top block there, you're gonna place your water and let it flow down. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come to the back side here and you're gonna place down your double chest in whatever orientation you want. Then you're gonna place down your one hopper going into the chest and the other hopper on the bottom here going into that hopper. Okay, now all you have to do is get your concrete powder. So, so the concrete farm is done. Now all we have to do is take four stacks of each thing. And if we put in some dye, what you're going to see is that we get eight stacks of concrete from it. So four stacks of each thing will turn out to be eight stacks of concrete. All you need is a little bit of dye too as well, which you can get from either the flowers, the octopus things here, and then as well as whatever else, like flowers and things like that. So Okay, so basically how this works is you just basically have to fill your inventory up with something silly like some candles or something like that. Then you're going to put your white concrete powder in your left hand, as you can see, okay? With your pickaxe in your right hand here, okay? And then in survival mode, you're going to come into the thing here, and all you're going to do is press the place button first, and then the attack button, and then hold them down. So that is the right mouse button first, and then the left, and then... Um, you will be making concrete. So as you can see, once we place the concrete powder down because the water is there, okay, as you can see, we get concrete out of it. Okay, so all we have to do is just step in here now and then press attack and hold. 
Okay, and you can do this until you exhaust your resources. And then once you are done, you will have concrete in your chest here. Okay, you can do this with any colored concrete and as well. And if you wanted to build this into the wall, that is definitely possible too as well. All you do is same thing, step in, place, attack, and then you're mining concrete. With the glass here on the side, because it is a transparent block, you're still capable of opening up the chest. And uh, yeah, so that's what it looks like in the wall. That's what it looks like as a standalone. Let's move on. Okay, so this next farm is on the same level as the concrete farm is there. Okay, remember, like I said, these farms here aren't for the first day of Minecraft, okay? So you need four repeaters, 12 redstone dust, nine glass, nine dark oak planks, a single piece of obsidian, a hopper, a chest, a water source, a lava bucket, um, concrete farm, like if you're going to mine concrete for hours on end, let's say you have a castle or something that you're going to build, you're going to need a dropper, or sorry, three droppers, another hopper, and as well as as many stone pickaxes as you can get your hands on. And you're going to need a piston for this build too. I don't know why I didn't put that in the chest there, okay? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do for this build is dig a hole out into the ground and then put a piece of glass on all three sides around it, just like that. Okay, next what we're going to do is on this one here on the side, we're going to come to the inside here and place a piston facing the inside there. Next, you're going to place a piece of glass on top of the piston like that and then build this one up three blocks. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to come to the back side here and you're going to place a block there. This has to be a full block. Okay, and another one there with one on that side as well. Then a piece of glass with another solid block. Next, you're going to place a piece of glass in the center there with a piece of obsidian underneath that block. Okay. Okay, we're going to stay on the back side here and we're going to place down two solid blocks coming off of the obsidian with another one on the back of that and then a full block there as well. This is what everything should look like here so far anyways. Then what we're going to do is come to the inside here and on the open space there where that block is, you're going to place down your water source. It should flow down into the hole there. And then next what we're going to do is above the piston on that piece of glass, we're going to place our lava and we should generate a piece of cobblestone or stone anyways. Next what we're going to do is just put your chest down here beside you with a hopper running into that from the side and then underneath the obsidian run your second hopper going into that chest and then you can put your two pieces of glass above it. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the back side here and we're gonna run some redstone up these steps here and into the corner. Then we're gonna take our repeaters and on every piece of glass, we're gonna run our repeaters in a circle going that way around with our redstone in the corner. Then what we're going to do is on this one here that is beside the Step, step up here where the redstone is. We're going to set this one to two ticks and then all the rest of them are going to go to four. And then all we have to do is turn this on. So now I didn't put this in the list, but all we have to do is grab a redstone torch, place down a temporary block here. And then what we're going to do is place the torch, remove it, and then remove this block here. Okay, and as you can see, everything is working. Okay, now it's time to fiddle with the timing in order to get it right so that way it generates concrete every single time. So, okay, and there we go. All I did was play with this one, so I turned it to one tick and then back down to two ticks. And there, as you can see, we are generating concrete on every single pull. So now all we have to do is come in here and mine this and then we are good. Or better yet, what we are going to do is this one here too it could be built inside a mountain so all I did was just hide the redstone that is in there and every time we pull the trigger here we are getting concrete and basically because the giant wall is here you know we don't get this you know wicked tail that goes out 12 blocks in case we do miss it okay and that is your cobblestone generator done now I'll leave a link in the description to the video of the auto generator video that I did it goes a little bit more in depth on these farms and as well shows you how to create the full auto setups for these but as for now this is what we're gonna do for the top five early game farms. so that way you don't have to you know we'll keep it as simple as possible so those are the first three right there. Let's move on to the next one. 
Okay, and the next one here is going to be the honey farm, or you can use it as a honeycomb farm. That is completely up to you. Okay, so the items that you're going to need for this farm are 32 glass, a dropper, a dispenser, some slabs. I think you're only going to need three, maybe four. Two hoppers, a minecart with hopper, a bee's nest, some flowers, a redstone repeater, a comparator, some redstone dust. You're going to need a few rails as well too to get the minecart with hopper in place. You're also going to need some chests, a door, you need some bottles and as well as some bees too. So go, you know, get those leashes out. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do for this farm are dig out a little hole in the ground like that, like a little L anyways. And then what you're going to do is place down your chest on the one side there with your hoppers going into the chest. Okay, next you're going to place your bee's nest or your beehive on the hopper there in the front with the holes going forwards as you can see. Then what we're going to do is in front of it, we're going to build up one block just like that. Okay, then we're going to take our rails and we're going to run them down into the bee's nest. Okay, then we're going to take our temporary blocks for now anyways, don't use glass obviously, and put them on all sides of the bee's nest. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to stand up here on the back side of this block where the rail is. And then just stand here and place your minecart on top of this rail here. Okay, as you can see, it goes down into the bee's nest. You can straighten it out. It doesn't matter if it's crooked or not. You can now remove these blocks and everything should be good. As you can see, we can walk around all four sides of this and it won't get bumped around. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to build up three blocks. These are just temporary. Remove the two blocks underneath this third one here and we're going to place down our dropper facing down into the bees nest and then our dispenser. Okay, you shouldn't see holes on any side here. Then we can remove that block up top. It looked like so far. Somehow my minecart straightened out which is awesome. Then what we're going to do is on top of this hopper here we're going to place a comparator with a solid block above it. Okay, and a repeater on top of that block. And now a honey block, okay, it can go to level five. So what we need to do is run at least five things of redstone. So we're gonna go one, two, and place down a solid block. Then we're gonna grab our planks and place down two more there, just like you see. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our redstone out, up onto this block, and then up to the repeater there. Okay, and what's going to happen is every level that this bee's nest here um, rises, so when it goes to honey level, as you see on the right there, if it goes to honey level one, okay, it's going to do the one block of redstone, and then two, three, four, and then when it gets to five, it will dispense whatever is in this top dropper here. With So, if we put our bottles in here, or you can fill this up with shears if you want to turn this into a honeycomb farm, Okay, once the bean's nest here reaches level five, it will dispense a bottle and collect the honey for you, or it will dispense a shear and collect the honeycombs for you. Okay, now you can just leave this like this if you would like to, and then go and plant it out in the middle of a flower field that has a whole bunch of bees in it. Okay, so something like this, you could easily just bring over two bees from another bee's nest here and then start to breed the bees, so that way this becomes their little flower thing, and you can build it here if you would like to, or, you know, somewhere around a little area like that, or what you can do is, okay, just make sure you have an area that is like this, okay, and then you can place down your flowers, and then what you're going to do is just surround this sucker here in glass. So we can fill this up here, three blocks high. Okay, because that is glass, the chest will still be capable of being opened. Okay, you can maybe remove these ones here and put your door down here if you would like. We'll do it to the inside so that way it opens out. And then what you can also do, this is why I brought the third slab, is place a slab here so that way you are capable of checking on the honey level from the outside. Now all you have to do is get your bees in here. Oh and put a roof on it first so they don't fly away. So go and get your bees from wherever, drag them in here, and then start to breed them up. Now I think you only need four, maybe five, for every bee's nest or beehive, but I'm just going to load this sucker up now with bees from the thing. Okay, these bees will go to work here. They will go inside the hive there once they collect enough pollen. As you can just hear, when they do come out, the redstone will start to light up. And like I said, once it gets to five, this thing here will generate some honey for us. 
Okay, so as you can see, I have this same setup over here. This one is only at three, so we're gonna leave it alone. But as you can see, because it is at level three on the hive, three pieces of redstone are lit up and uh, yeah, everything's good. If we look in the chest here, all I have are honey bottles and this thing has 11 left, so we are good to go. So we'll just wait for this one to do its thing while we build the final farm here. The final farm for this video is going to be the infamous mini iron farm. That's right, you got it. Now we're going to build this thing quick. I'll leave a link in the description again for the um, comprehensive, you know, detailed guide, whatever you want to call it. But for now, what you're going to need is three beds, three composters, um, four stone blocks for the golems to spawn on some glass for i would do 12 at least 12 pieces of glass maybe just bring a half stack along with you i may be off on that one okay you're going to need a solid block for the villagers to stand on then some trap doors i would bring three along with you three signs some brick walls as well too your hopper your chest your cauldron for the zombie and then either a name tag or I find they pick up rotten flesh the most out of anything so bring some rotten flesh along too to throw at your zombie in order for him to pick up the items so okay so the first thing you're gonna do is make sure that you are at least eight blocks in the air for this build here and make sure you are at least eight blocks away from everything too as well so that way you don't spawn any golems on the objects around you Okay, so the first thing you're going to do once you are eight blocks in the air here with your solid block, what you're going to do is place down your trap door, place down a temporary block, and this is going to be used to place down your first bed. Make sure that the pillow is facing outwards. Then you're going to do another bed and then another bed there, all with the pillows facing out. Then you're going to aim at the trap door again. That's how I just put down those two beds. Place down a composter with a solid block above it. Okay, this is what it should look like so far. Then you're gonna fill this hole here with water. And then a composter over the foot of each of those side beds there with a trap door on the top half there like that. And then I think I forgot to put this in the thing and I did, okay, and I forgot to put this in the materials list but I'll make sure I get a text in there. Okay, then you're gonna place your carpet on top of the trap door there and then next what you're going to do is you're going to get your villagers in place. Now, this can either be done by a short little minecart system. So you can use a boat to get the villagers close and then just, you know, minecart them up in into place. Or what you can do, let's say they have a trade from a previous village that you did steal them from. What you can do is, okay, so as you can see, if I put this down here, he becomes a farmer. You can build a bridge over to it. And then if you try to talk to this guy, okay. You can see he walks towards you. You can lure them in that way. If this other guy would just go away, go away. Okay, and as you can see, he will just keep walking towards me because he wants to do business with me. So you can lure him in that way. Okay, it's slow, but it does work. All you have to do is just build a little land bridge over to it. Okay, once you have your villagers in place, you should see they are taking up the trades now. And next what we're going to do is on the back side here, we're going to build up two blocks. And then we're going to build out another one there on that side. And then we're going to put down four pieces of stone, just like you see there, with two pieces of glass on this side. And then a hole, or that's going to be our hole anyways, where, we, where our iron is going to drop down. Next what you're going to do is you're going to come to the outside here, and you're going to place down your stone fence that we brought along. Then you're going to build that out, and you're going to bring it around to the other side here like that. You can remove the corner one if you want to. And then what we're gonna do is on this outside corner here, okay, we're gonna build this up three high at least. Okay, we're gonna do the same for that side. We're gonna bring it right into the corner. Then we're gonna grab our signs and we're going to do a sign here on the second level with one there and another one there, leaving an opening up there. This is where we're gonna place our lava. And depending on how many hoppers you have, um, depends on how you're going to set this up. Now I'm going to place down my chest on the bottom on the bottom side here, or starting on the bottom side here, and then I'm going to run my three hoppers up. Even though I said to bring two, I'm going to run three of them up, and then I'm just going to have a piece of glass there and there to contain anything that falls in there. Then what we're going to do is come to the inside here and place down another sign 
underneath that one there that will stop the water from going into there but if you do have enough hoppers you can just place a hopper there and then you don't need the other side okay so there is two ways that you can set this up like i said either hopper in there or a sign and then when we place our water here as you can see okay nothing goes down and into there and the golems are too big to squeeze down a one by one area so you should be fine with that being the way it is Okay, next what you're going to do is in front of the bed here, you're going to build out two temporary blocks. Then you're going to place down your cauldron. Okay, then you're going to build a little surrounding around the cauldron just like that. And that is for you to contain your zombie. Now all you have to do is just like a same thing as before with your other villagers, is get your zombie up in place and drop him down in this hole. Okay, once your zombie is in place, you can either name tag him or throw him some items. Sometimes they'll pick it up. If not, just give them a name tag. Okay, and once we wait a full day-night cycle here. Okay, and after waiting a full day-night cycle, as you can see, we've got our first golem to spawn and our iron farm is ready. So what basically ends up happening is these villagers here, they float up and down on top of this um, water source here. And what happens is they stay in line of the zombie here long enough that they can gossip about it and spawn a golem. But what ends up happening is they'll float down far enough that they lose line of sight. And all they have to do is lose the line of sight for a split second. And they think these, the, the zombie is gone. And then once they spot him again by floating back up, they will gossip again and spawn another golem. At night time... Okay, as you can see, I just set it to nighttime, and the villagers do attempt to sleep at some point in time. Now, all they have to do is basically touch down on the bed, and that classifies as a villager ha that a villager has slept. So, as you can see, that right there, that is a sleeping villager, according to Minecraft. So, these guys wake up, they gossip, and as soon as they do gossip with at least two other people, they will spawn another golem. Now, this farm here typically has about you know anywhere from 37 to 55 second respawns on it so it's a pretty decent farm you know I've only been here for a couple of seconds just chit chatting and I already have 13 iron in the thing so it's a it's a pretty good farm if you notice your villagers are bouncing around too much like that or after a night when they get spooked and they wake up and they start kind of going crazy all you have to do is place a trap door there above them and then everything is good these are five pretty sweet farms i mean all of them work pretty efficiently um these ones here like i said i'll link a video to so you can set these up to be auto farms if you want to and as for the melon farm you know these numbers aren't accurate but whenever the melon does grow we we do get them you can also set this up for pumpkins if you want to um this one here all you have to do is just find whatever dye and you get whatever colored concrete that you want out of it um, this one if you do have a silk touch pickaxe you can just get regular stone blocks out of it okay as, as opposed to getting cobblestone from it when it does generate sometimes it will generate stone like this and other times it will generate cobblestone so that is up to you um, this one here I haven't checked it since the build but we're at honey level zero so and there you have it we have four honey bottles already so this cycle has already been or has already started to work for us, which is sweet. Okay, like another viewer posted on my last five farm video, instead of using dispensers for the crop farm that we had here, which you can convert to another warp farm if you want to, what you can do is use trapdoors like we do in the witch farm. Now you do have to set up the backside a little bit differently. You do have to put a block in the corner with a redstone torch on it that lights up this back row. And that is to ensure that the trapdoors stay open so the crops can grow. And then what you do is just run your redstone down and on a button. And when you are ready to harvest, all you do is press the button. You get your crops and everything is good to go. Now, if you don't think that that opening there is long enough to push all eight blocks of these crops down, all you have to do is switch this out for a lever. Okay. And then it is essentially the same thing as the other farm, but a lot cheaper. Instead of using eight dispensers here or however long your farm is, you just do trap doors with a single redstone torch and bammo. So thank you so much to the viewer that commented that. 
like I said, that is how the witch farm is set up, and I just I don't know why that never why that never came to mind. You sir are a doer. It's the community. The community, ladies and gentlemen. Ah! Okay, but that does it for this video, you guys. That is my top five or another top five iron farm video that you guys can put together and use in your worlds. Um, thank you so much for the support on all the videos. And yeah, you guys are amazing. That's all I can say. Thank you so much. Appreciate every single one of you. I'll continue to keep these videos up and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.